Do you support stripping American citizenship uh, from those who are thought to be involved in terrorist activity? You know, that's something that Senator Lieberman has proposed. I've really not had a chance to look at the bill that uh, I guess he is in the process of, of putting together. But I do know that using just traditional law enforcement techniques, we can put people in jail for extended periods of time. We can put them in jail for the rest of their lives. We can even execute them. Uh, I think there are constitutional concerns with uh, the bill that uh, Senator Lieberman is proposing. You issued a Miranda warning to Shazad, the right to remain silent, um, at which point a lot of defendants, uh, suspects, could get a lawyer. Uh, you did that after eight hours and after you had already gotten him talking. There's criticism about injecting the possibility that a suspect will not provide intelligence if you give them that Miranda warning. Take me through that process of what the balancing test is before Miranda is actually issued. Well, I wouldn't say that we talked to him for eight hours about giving his Miranda warnings, but aside from that, uh, what you do is you use the public safety exception that the Supreme Court has defined um, to make sure that there are no immediate threats. The quote-unquote ticking time bomb scenario. Ticking time bomb. And then you make the determination um, whether or not it is appropriate, whether you think that giving Miranda warnings to that person is going to stop the flow of information or whether the flow of information will continue and you make the determination in this particular case is it more important for us to get intelligence from this person or is it more important for us to um, build the case one of the things that we have certainly seen is that the giving of Miranda warnings has not stopped these terrorist suspects from talking to us they have continued to talk even though we have given them uh, Miranda warnings. is that still the case here which is that that's clearly the case. Uh, he had, was given his Miranda warnings um, after the public safety exception questioning uh, was finished, and he has talked to us, and he continues to talk to but us. But would you like interrogators to have more flexibility? Yeah, I think we have to look at the uh, rules that we have and look at the situation that we now confront. Uh, the public safety exception was really based on a robbery that occurred um, back in the 80s and uh, something to do with a supermarket. We're now dealing with international terrorism, and I think that we have to think about uh, perhaps modifying the rules that uh, interrogators have and somehow coming up with something that is flexible and is more consistent with the threat that we now so face. So let me, let me unpack that a little bit. What you'd like to see happen is that Congress would pass a law that would say to judges, Hey, look, in this environment, if we extract information that could be valuable intelligence about another terror plot, about who they're involved in, whether they're connected to the Pakistani Taliban, we want to get all that without them lawyering up and still be able to use that against them in a court of law. And you need more flexibility to do that, you think? Yeah, we certainly need more flexibility, and we want the public safety exception to be consistent with uh, the public safety concerns that we now have in the 21st century as opposed to the public safety concerns that we had back in the 1980s. So that's news. I mean, th that's an important development. Would you work with Congress to try to get that new law passed? Yeah, we want to work with Congress to come up with a way in which we make our public safety exception more flexible and, again, more consistent with the threat uh, that we face. And, yes, this is, in fact, big news. This is a proposal that uh, we're going to be making and that we want to work uh, with Congress about. So a new priority for the administration. It is a new priority. Will Shazad be tried in civilian court? Uh, we will see. I suspect that he will. We have developed information that I think we can use in um, a civilian court. Um, it, it's it not even sure at this point whether or not there'll even have to be a trial. Okay. Uh, but if there is a trial, it's not a decision you've made 100% yet. No, but I suspect he'd be in a civilian court. Let's talk about another decision you haven't made yet with regard to a trial. For Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the alleged mastermind behind 9-11, uh, you announced that he would be in a civilian trial in New York. And when you made that announcement back in November, this is what you said. For over 200 years, our nation has relied on a faithful adherence to the rule of law to bring criminals to justice and provide accountability to victims. Once again, we will ask our legal system in two venues to rise to that challenge. I'm confident that it will answer the call with fairness and with justice. Fairness and justice. That same month, you were asked what happens if Khaled Sheikh Mohammed is acquitted. And this is what you said. If there were the possibility that a trial was not successful, uh, that would not mean that that person would be released into, um, into our country. That, that, would, that is not a possibility. So if he's acquitted, he would not be released. How is that consistent, Mr. Attorney General, with fairness and justice that you believe in of our system? Well, he certainly would be provided fairness and justice with regard to the trial that would uh, occur. And with regard to the outcome uh, of that trial, we have, if, and if he were acquitted, what I was trying to say, that there are uh, other mechanisms that we have um, that we might employ, immigration um, laws that we could use, uh, the possibility of detaining him under the, uh, the wars of law. There are a variety of things that we can do in order to protect the American people, and that is the thing that I keep up with most but of it, my mind. It, but if he's acquitted and the United States says we will not let him free, 
then what is the point of having a trial? Well, there are other charges that are that could be brought against him in addition to those he would stand uh, accused of with regard to the 9-11 plot. There are a variety of other things that he could be tried for. And I think we can provide him with fairness and with justice in the uh, systems that we now have in place. But you said with regard to any KSM trial, failure is not an option. And yet you know full well, you send prosecutors into court every day in this country knowing that there is plenty of uncertainty. Paul McNulty, the former deputy uh, attorney general, said earlier this year with regard to the Massawi prosecution, he said, the criminal justice process is not designed to guarantee any particular outcome. If that option, civilian court, is followed, we have to accept that it is unpredictable. A trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in civilian court is unpredictable, isn't it? Well, I'm confident that uh, if we try him in a civilian court, given the evidence that we have amassed, given the experience of the prosecutors who would try the case, given the skills that they have, um, that we will stand a very, very good chance of, uh, of convicting But that's not what you said. You said failure is not an option. You said he will not be released. And the broader criticism is of you that you say you believe in our civilian justice system. And you said when you became attorney general that I'm going to stick to those principles even when it's hard. And yet, with all the political pressure to be tough on terrorists, you said I believe in the system. At the same time, you appear to be rewriting the rules of that system, which ultimately critics say can undermine the system. Even with Shazad, before he was charged, you held a press conference announcing that he had confessed. Well, Shouldn't that be a concern to those who work with you and others who believe, as you say you do, in our civilian justice system? I believe in the civilian justice system. I have certainly worked all my life in the civilian justice system. I have confidence in the civilian justice system's ability to handle these new threats that our, our, our country faces. With regard to Shazad, with regard to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, I think that we have conducted ourselves in a way that's consistent with uh, the best that is about our, our, our civilian justice system. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that I have to take back anything that I have said uh, in the past. One of the things that we did with regard to that press conference was to get out there early to assure the American people generally and people in New York specifically that the person we thought was responsible um, for that attempted bombing was in fact in custody. Will KSM be tried in New York? Uh, we are still in the process of trying to decide where that trial will occur. What is the holdup? Everybody seems to be saying this is a foregone conclusion. It's never going to New York. Why won't you say that it won't be there? Well, we're taking a look at all of our options and trying to decide where the case can best be tried. Um, there are federal statutes that we have to deal with that dictate where the case would have to occur if we are going to seek uh, the death penalty, as I've indicated that we will. Um, there are a variety of things that have to be taken into consideration, both in, in addition to what I've talked about. We also have to take into account uh, what the political leadership in these various jurisdictions wants, what the, what the people uh, in these jurisdictions. New York areas. doesn't want it. New York doesn't have the resources for it. You just deployed all these FBI agents to catch Shazad. What if they had to protect... Uh, a trial of KSM. I mean, it's fairly clear that it doesn't belong in New York, according to elected officials and other law enforcement officials. And yet there is this basically inaction on this issue of where the trial is. Is this being overly politicized by this administration and by you? No, it's not being overly po politicized. What we're trying to do is come up with the best decision that we can. We're taking our time. We're considering all of our options. We want to make sure that we put this trial in the place where uh, it can best be held. Should we're it be a military tribunal? That is one of the things that we are in the process of trying to decide. So more likely that now than a civilian no, trial? I wouldn't say one is more likely than the other at this point. We are, as I said, working our way through this and, again, trying to come up with the best place for the trial to occur. But critics, including more progressive liberal critics of this administration and of you, say, look, you said there was going to be a civilian trial. You said you were going to close down Guantanamo. You announced that there would be five military tribunals when you made the announcement about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. What is the holdup? Gitmo is still open. There is no movement on military tribunals. And by the way, what happens if you capture operatives on the battlefield somewhere overseas? You have nowhere to put them. Well, there are a variety of questions. You put a, you've packed a lot into that one question. You can unpack it. There are a whole bunch of things that we have to do. First, with regard to Guantanamo, we are bound and determined to close Guantanamo. It is a place that ser has served as a recruiting tool for, uh, for al-Qaeda. And so we're in the process of working our way through that. We've asked Congress in the budget for the uh, Justice Department for 2011 to give us the money necessary to buy a facility uh, in Thompson, Illinois, and we would be able to close Guantanamo, transfer um, prisoners there. Uh, with regard to the selection of a trial site, that is something that we are working through. With with our uh, law enforcement components, with the intelligence community, to try to come up with ways in which we can find the best place uh, to try to try the case. But you will stick to your belief in the civilian justice system. If Khaled Sheikh Mohammed is acquitted in a U.S. court, will the United States let him free? We will consider our options at the conclusion of that unlikely event. As I said, there are other charges that can be brought. Uh, it is hard for me to imagine a situation in which he would be uh, let free, given all the evidence that we have against him with regard to the trial that we would bring, and then beyond that with regard to other charges that we have and other abilities that we have uh, to try to keep him detained.